Welcome to Pixtope Academy. Once you select a show from the start menu, the setup and production views will be unique to that specific show and store its setup configuration in that show file. Once you select continue with an open show, you'll be directed from the start view to the setup view. The setup view is dedicated to the initial configuration of your system, including tracking and video routing. The launch panel shows all the levels and control panels of the project linked to your show. All changes made in the setup view are stored in the open show. The launch panel is available in both setup and production view. Now, under show settings, here you can edit your project path, import the configuration and calibration settings from another show, adjust your base settings, including the compositing color space. Here, you can select between video space and linear space. Linear space provides photorealistic compositing and supports HDR and color managed workflows. Here, the video input is converted to linear color data and combined with the linear color graphics before being tone mapped back to nonlinear color data for the output. While in video space, there's no color management or support for HDR output. Video space mode will provide Pixtope's video mixing engine to work similarly to traditional video mixers, where it combines the input video and generates graphics after they apply the Unreal Filmic Tone Mapper. Here, the input material is assumed to be Rec. 709, and the graphics are mapped to Rec. 709 before being combined with the video. Finally, we have the default source settings. This will automatically populate any new video input or output with the source type, format, color profile, and color space selected here. These can always be adjusted later though under their appropriate panels in Video I.O. And underneath this, we have the DX12 mode for supporting ray tracing in your project. All right, now that we've configured the settings specific to the show, we can go ahead and add a camera system. Click Add Camera System and pick a name for this camera. Here, you can add more cameras by clicking Add Camera System in the top bar if you have more than one camera in the studio. Please note, while you can add additional cameras, only one camera system can be in use per engine at a given time. We also define a camera system as a video input tethered to a tracking data configuration. Under Camera and Lens, you can specify the film back or sensor size using the drop down menu under camera type. The field is also searchable, so you can type directly in here with the name of your make or model. All supplied camera definitions are either 16x9 or 17x9 in aspect ratio. Their aspect ratio is defined by their film back width and height dimensions. It's important to note that if you do not match the aspect ratios, the output image may be letterbox or a pillar box into the output video frame. You can also create your own non-standard aspect ratio by selecting add camera type, enter your camera type name, and then the width and height of the film back in millimeters. Make sure to check the documentation of your camera for the film pack size related to the aspect ratio that you'll be shooting in. Next, we'll select the assigned tracking server it's important to note that while the assigned tracking service is listening to all listed IP addresses, we recommend that you always want to use your tracking on a separate, dedicated static network to ensure that there's no congestion in the network. Select the camera tracking protocol. Our studio camera is currently using a FreeD D1 tracking protocol. We can see that the status has updated, showing that we're receiving data from the tracking server. Under Advanced, you have additional parameters for tracking adjustments. Under Camera Mount, you can select the type of mount setup you have for your camera. In our case, we have a tripod, so we'll select that. This then opens up additional fields to fill out with the height of the tripod, as well as the distance between the pivot points on the camera base. You can refer to the diagram on the right to see where the measurements should cover. Under Lens Tracking, here you can select to enable a lens file and choose between a few of the ones offered in the drop-down by Pixtope. A lens file is a basic lookup table for the lens. While there are templates available, these will never give a perfect result because every lens is unique, even if they're from the same manufacturer and make. So you should ideally be generating a lens file for every lens you mount. Next, you'll input the zoom and focus encoder limits based on what you see in the Pixtope editor. 
We'll go over how to get those in more detail in another tutorial. Great, with the camera configured, we'll move on to object tracking. If you have an object that will be tracked in this production, this is where you'll add the object tracker group. An object tracker group organizes object trackers, which share the same tracking space, tracking protocol, and tracking service. Add the object tracker group name and specify the routing to the machine. Then you'll select Add Object Tracker and name the object tracker as well as the selected port number for the production. Each object tracker will then be listed under the object log detailing its status. Under Object Tracking, you can select the drop down menu to specify the object tracker protocol. And under Advanced, you can make adjustments to the way the data is mapped. Next, we'll navigate to the Video I.O. panel. This is where you'll define your video inputs and outputs. The camera input list will be pre-populated with any camera system that's been set up under camera tracking. Additionally, this will be pre-populated with the default video input format, color profile, and color space that's been set up under show settings. You can override these by selecting the drop-down menu to adjust them to whichever configurations your production requires. With Pixtope 2.0, we now support the following sources or destinations. Aja video cards, Blackmagic design deck link video cards, File. This is an experimental new feature allowing for video playback from a local media file, and NDI. With the input type, we now have three options. Fill is the default setting, and it allows for using the internal video keyer. Fill external key. Here the video is keyed externally, and it's provided as a separate fill and key signal. When selected, a separate key entry is created automatically. And fill slash key, external key. Here the video is keyed externally and is provided as a combined fill and key signal. In addition to your camera system, you can also add an additional media input if you need untracked video sources in your level. Select add media input, name your media input, and then select file under input. Now that we've added our video inputs, we'll select Add Media Output to add one or more media outputs, and we'll go ahead and type the name for each media output added. Please note that it's critical for your production that the video input and video output frame rates are the same. In regards to color space, please note that when OCIO viewport enabled is selected in the editor, the color space of the editor viewport is linked to this color space selection. This will only apply if your compositing color space is set to linear space. Last, you'll select your output type. Fill will be used for internal compositing mode and is set as the default, and key is set for external compositing mode. Also, in Pixtope 2.0, audio can now be configured for the output, with the audio delays able to be adjusted manually here. And now for the final step of your setup configuration, routing. This is where you'll route the physical inputs, outputs, and the Genlock reference signal to the video I.O. card. You do this by selecting Add Input, and then selecting the camera system which was set up in the previous steps. If you're using an external keyer, you'll have a separate input for fill and key. We'll go ahead and select an SDI spigot for its input source. This will need to be done for all inputs and output sources. To set up the Genlock reference signal, click the drop-down under Genlock, and pick between internal, external reference, or external SDI input. Now, let's add our next input. This will be our untracked media source. We'll go ahead and select File, which will allow us to pick the file from our computer. In 2.0, you now have the ability to select show scopes for one of your video inputs, providing a color histogram, waveform, and vector scope in the output. Now to set up the output routing, select Add Output and add the output along with its appropriate spigot for the video card. And now we've configured our media input, output, and gen log. And if we select the incoming tracking data routing, you'll be able to see all incoming data routing and its current status along with the port number. Now to the calibration tabs. Under Tracking Panel, here's where you can fine tune the camera offset tracking data, camera mount, projection center, and lens data. Under syncing, on the top of the window, you have the camera system or systems. Here, you can individually adjust the tracking delay 
or video input delay in order to make the composited image sync with the live input and video graphics. Under frame matching method, here you can select between buffer size or timecode matching. And if you select the object tracker, you can select the amount of frames to offset its tracking by. 